The internet has made it easier than ever to start a business. Succeeding on the internet, now that's another story. The big question is, what are those who are succeeding doing differently? This podcast has the answers. Welcome to the Marketing Matrix podcast. I'm your host, Lisanne Murphy, and I am here with the incredible and talented Jamie Dorshuk. Jamie, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thank you so much for having me on What's Up, Ad Ninjas. I'm so excited to be talking to you guys today about all things copywriting and conversion rate optimization. I'm here to serve and give you all value, so I'm really pumped. Oh, guys, you guys, you guys are going to absolutely love Jamie. I want to take a second to introduce this incredible entrepreneur, and then she's just going to blow us away with her story and what she's doing in the world with her business. It really is fantastic. So Jamie is, she, she calls herself your friendly neighborhood marketing nerd, and she has completely lived up to that in the time that I have known her. Jamie is an award-winning business consultant who, helped, who helps mission-driven organizations scale up their impact. Her projects have directly generated 10 million plus in revenue for her clients just since 2018. Guys, that's like, that's less than two years. She works with e-commerce companies, agencies, nonprofits, government organizations, and social media influencers like Jay Shetty, Jake Paul, Six Sisters stuff. She's, uh, she's a copywriter. So that's what, that's like her main jam, what she does for people. Uh, and I had an opportunity to have a conversation with her last week and, uh, she focuses on launches guys. So she does huge, huge launches for the people that she works with. Uh, and her list of accolades is, is long enough that if I read it, it would take up this entire interview. So this, <laughs> this woman is, is legit. So Jamie, again, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us on the marketing matrix. I am so excited and I just love talking about all things marketing and sales and I really love helping people. You know, I feel like, you know what they say that like we have our cell phones in our pockets and it's more technology than they sent people to the moon. I think that that is incredible and with that, um, that opportunity, I don't believe that anybody should be working a job that they hate. You know, like if you are working like at McDonald's or you're an administrative assistant and you're only making $10 an hour, it is easily possible for you to make $17,000 a year online, $30,000 a year online, like doing anything. You know, you like chickens, you like video games, that's totally fine. But um, I also believe even further than that is possible for all people. Like Gary Vaynerchuk says that he thinks you can make between 70 and even over a hundred thousand dollars per year in most niches. So that's like what I'm here and what I'm about. I want to help people build a business around at least something that they like, but hopefully something that you love you guys, because it's 2020 and you shouldn't be, you know, spending your time on something that you don't love. Like you got to just push that noise away from you because you don't, you deserve way better than that. And I'm here to help however I can. I love it. So if, if I, if I get to give a recommendation to everybody, just take the last like 60 seconds of what Jamie was talking about and listen to it every single morning and you will be on your way to success. So <laughs> mindset with Jamie, we didn't even count on that today. I love it. Bam, okay, that could so, be like a whole separate uh, Instagram clip. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so Jamie, for those people that aren't as familiar with who you are, tell us about your journey. How did you come to be working on these huge six-figure launches, generating millions and millions of dollars, working with people like Jay Shetty and the Six Sisters and Jake Paul? Like, like how, how did this happen? Absolutely. And I mean, you know, when you put it like that, for you guys listening, it sounds really intimidating and super whack. Like, I get it. But to be completely honest with you, I started out just like most of you guys right now. So I, I'm going to give the condensed version because there's a lot of details. But when I was in high school and stuff, you know, people are preparing to go to college and whatever. I was a music major. So being a music major, like you have to prepare a little bit differently. And it's not only that you apply to, you know, the institution or whatever that you want to go to, you also have to audition and so you can like get accepted into your college of choice, but not into the music program. So I played a weird instrument is called a bass clarinet. And at the time, there were only five schools in the world, not the country, the world that offered an undergraduate degree in bass clarinet, classical music performance. Um, the reason why is that normally you would do a your undergraduate in soprano clarinet which is like the regular one that y'all are thinking about um also called a b flat clarinet 
And then you would do like a master's in classical performance in a bass clarinet, which look it up. It looks super cool. It looks kind of like a tenor saxophone and I'll, you know, shoot Lizanne over a picture and we can, um, you know, stick that in the show notes or whatever, wherever you're listening to this too, because it's very fun looking instrument, best instrument in the world. Um, so that was a situation that I'm in though. And so I had to audition for two schools in the U.S., and three in another country, like abroad, other countries, two in uh, the Netherlands and one in Switzerland. So I did like blah, 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 all that stuff, got my things back. And then I made my decision. And it looks like y'all, I'm going to a music conservatory in Bern, Switzerland. So when you move out of home and you have to learn all these hard lessons, like uh, the fridge doesn't restock itself. And oh, there's really not a magical laundry fairy who just takes care of that all for me. Um, nope, that's mom. And I had to learn all those lessons too, except I had to learn them in German. So um, that just adds like an extra layer of complication to matters. But the thing is, you guys, when you're studying in another country, you have to get a visa. So I had an education visa. And what that, in Switzerland, they're really strict about it. So you're not allowed to work um, for the first six months that you're living there. And then after the first six months, you're only allowed a maximum of 10 hours per week. And I don't know what y'all know about Switzerland, but it is really expensive. So I'm like, that's not gonna, that's not really gonna work for me, dog. That'll be a no from me, dog. Um, so this is where I started thinking. And I'm like, I have to, like, I want to make money. It's not going to be possible to get a job at the grocery store or whatever, or a restaurant. And so I have to work with Americans because I can't work with Swiss people or like the government will find out like what I'm doing. Um, the money cannot go into my Swiss bank account, which yes, I have a Swiss bank account. It's not as cool as it was before. Um, they are mandatory IRS reporters now. So the hotness is now like the Caribbean islands and stuff like that. But I do have one. So um, just, yeah, the, but the, I can't have my money go into there because like, again, the Swiss government will see that. Um, and then there's other layers of complication. Like, well, I'm, you know, I have to be entirely location independent. And you could be, you know, like an Amazon customer support person or like an Apple customer support person. But the thing is, you usually have to commit to like a block shift. And that's not really possible when I'm living in like such a different time zone than, you know, I'm going to probably be telling them I live in the U.S. or whatever. So that is going to fall apart really quickly. And a music schedule is not consistent at all. So with all of those challenges, I'm like, what am I going to do? Because I definitely can't afford to live in Switzerland for uh, six months with no income. <laughs> um, uh, so that's when I decided I have to teach myself a skill, I guess. So I use a website called reddit.com. It's kind of like big forum on the internet. Instead of having niche forums, it's like a big umbrella forum that probably has like, you know, sports, you like a, the Eagles or whatever, there's like an Eagles forum on there. You like marketing, there's tons of marketing things on there and stuff like that. Um, so I went on one that's called a subreddit. That's what the little, like the under forums are called. It called r slash for hire. And it's basically like Craigslist. So I'm like, you know, scrolling through this thing and I'm just like, well, what are people buying? or paying money for. And I saw like marketing, 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 marketing. Well, I saw a lot of programming stuff too. And I'm like, that seems really complicated. Then I saw a lot of marketing stuff. And I'm like, I could teach myself that, I guess. So I wound up, uh, that's exactly how I started. I started in video marketing, making like whiteboard videos where you have a little hand and he's drawing stuff and there's a voiceover and stuff like that. Um, and that's how I started for the first couple of months. And I was doing, and this is what I mean, you guys, like, I just want to focus in back here. You know, when Lizanne's saying all this like cool dope stuff that I did, it sounds really scary. And like, how could I ever, you know, be doing stuff like that? But I started out the same as you doing projects for, you know, like $200 a pop, like $400 a pop, just little things um, like that. And that is exactly how I started. And I loved marketing. So I was just like constantly learning, you know, a new skill, a new skill, a new skill. 
Um, and I focused actually on my video marketing business for probably like all, all through college, like two and a half years and things like that. I love it. Okay. So how did, well, how did you get from, from video to copywriting? How did that okay. happen? Yeah, that's an awesome question. So uh, uh, it was in my junior year of college. I had moved back to the United States because I decided I didn't want to be a music major anymore. And believe it or not, when you go to a music conservatory, there's not really any other options besides being a music major. Um, so I moved back to the United States and I went to the University of South Florida, which is in Tampa Bay, which is where I live now. Go Bulls. Um, but so I was in my junior year of college, still doing my video marketing thing. But I decided like, I want to do a little project or something on the side so that I have something, you know, to do to practice my skills in between client projects, like finding them and doing them and stuff like that. So I decided to do a subscription box business. It was called Berg Box, which I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. And what I would do is like curate locally made products and stuff and then put them in and mail them out. So through that process, I had to learn more marketing skills than just the video marketing. So I got to be involved in basically all parts of the marketing um, chain and process. So I did everything myself, the social media, the website, the email marketing and set everything up and stuff like that. And that is how I ultimately came to developing copywriting skills and like, you know, the subscription box business did pretty well. I got on like my local ABC Action News and built it up to like 25 subscribers. We broke even in the first month, which I was really happy with because I bought all the inventory with the money I was making from my like video marketing stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just hustled and grinded that out. And uh, then eventually I wound up getting one offer from my city's chamber of commerce to buy my company and give me full creative control of it. And they would just fund everything. And they would also place it in our visitor center and help me develop like other retail partnerships and stuff like that. Um, and then I like, I'm jumping around in the story, but I also had taken it to a pitch competition. Um, and although I didn't, I didn't win the, pitch competition despite being the only person with an actual business like making money right now um the the winner was like we have no technical background but we're gonna make um job kiosks in a country that like is really far away and none of us it was like a latin american country and none of us speak spanish and none of us are technical founders and i'm like oh all right well that's cool um but one of the judges really loved my pitch and my presentation. So we were having some meetings about him basically being like an angel investor. So I have these two offers to buy my business. And that's when I had to take a moment and be real with myself and be like, you know, ooh, I just got a pop up in my, my headphones. Um, scary. Anyway, um, where I had to take a moment and be real with myself and really of like be introspective. And the thing is that I, and you know, I'm a, I'm a legal adult. Like I was probably 19 or 20 when I was doing that. And if I take people's money, I'm making a real commitment to them, a real legal commitment that if it's not any longer, like I'm doing this as a project and if I don't want to do it anymore, like I don't have to. And ultimately I did not start this business to be Jamie Dorshuk, the subscription box queen of Florida. I made it to be Jamie Dorshuk. I'm practicing my marketing skills for, you know, in between client work. So I like turned both of those down and then I shut down the business. And this is when I transitioned full time to copywriting because over this process of learning everything about marketing, by far my favorite 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 thing in the world was like the feeling of sending an email and then i look in my paypal and i have like 200 dollars. like i was hooked i was hooked the second that started happening and i knew that i mean it's super fun and i'm obviously kind of good at it if i and I, my list was not big i mean my list was like probably 150 people that I had shaken down like in person as I'm being a vendor at markets and stuff like that. Um, 
And so I was like, well, I have these skills. I have some results. Like I made money, you know, for myself. So I'm going to just focus on offering this to clients. And like, you know, that's exactly how I got into copywriting. And still it was the same thing of like, take a project, couple hundred dollars a month. Um, and I was really, I'm a extremely results driven person. So I really wanted to get results from each project. And each time I got results, I can use those results and like turn them around to the next customer and raise my price every time that I get new results. Mm, I love that. That's a powerful tool and, and really important to remember. Um, so what, as you're on this journey, I mean, because you didn't I love how you shared how you were you were kind of going back and forth and trying different things and and you didn't know where you were going to end up. Absolutely. Uh, so, like, what what was the biggest struggle that you encountered on your path in marketing? Yeah, um, that's an excellent question. And here's the thing: the biggest challenge, and I mean, I skipped over some whole part in Switzerland where I got like really depressed, and my mom because I didn't want to be a music major and the stuff is really taxing. And so I'm like having repetitive stress injuries because of, of practice, you have to practice for like six hours a day at minimum to keep up with your coursework and stuff. So like I'm sleeping in wrist braces every day because of these injuries. And like, I know already that this isn't what I wanna do. I got so depressed that my mom wound up having to come to Switzerland and like make sure that I was okay. And I'm really thankful that she did that. And she, cause you know, navigating a foreign, medical system is confusing. So she like helped me get um, like a therapist and like made the help, like help me find someone, get into that and like start the sessions and just stay and like help, help me move and everything like that. But the biggest challenge, it I wanted to say that cause I didn't get to talk about it. And that was like a real low point in my life. I mean, you know, that my mom had to fly from another country because she was, she said that she was worried I was going to kill myself. I don't think I was that bad, but I was like really super depressed. So that's a really, really low point in my life. Um, and this, I'm bringing this up because it's come up. My biggest challenge is with both music and the subscription box thing. It's when you take on something as part of your identity and having to make the decision to let that go to move on to something else because for music you know i was training not as early as as some people you know some people are like taking piano lessons like when they're two days old or whatever um but i have been like this is my track that i'm going to go on i'm going to be a professional musician since middle school and even kind of early elementary or i'm sorry late elementary school and stuff like that so that was a big part of my identity and I had to let that go and I moved back, you know, and it's, it's everybody's worst fear, except I didn't move back to my hometown, but like, you know, you move to another country, everybody's afraid that you move somewhere, you're going to have to come back like with your tail between your legs because it didn't work out. So like I had to, well, cause it didn't work out, you know, I want to put like heavy quotes around that. So I had to go through that. That was really hard. I had to let go of my identity of being a musician because I was not going to be a professional musician. I didn't want to. Um, and then even through being uh, with the subscription box, you know, I go to everyone knows me. Like in my area, we have this thing called the Saturday morning market. It's a huge, um, like, I don't want to, it's not really like a flea market. It's like a local vendor, like a farmer's market more, but like with um, 200 vendors and all of those. And it's a, it's a fun, it's a thing I'd love to do on the weekend, you know, like go and walk around and stuff. Many of those, of those people were my vendors for my subscription boxes. So like, I can't even go, you know, to the market and enjoy a nice weekend without people like, you know, recognizing me and stuff because we're working together. I go to a networking group um, that I've been going to the same networking group since I was 19. And uh, I had a moment with some of my friends from there where I realized like there's some of my oldest friends that are, and especially like closely circ like in my, um, you know, what's it called? Solar system or whatever currently. Cause like we've been friends for six years with me and a lot of those people, they all know me as a subscription box girl. Um, all my friends know me as a subscription box girl. They wrote about me in my college newspaper. So all my college, like, um, you know, peers and stuff know me as a subscription box girl. 
Um, I was, like I was said, I was on the local news. Everybody knows me as a subscription box girl, but I still had to let that go as part of my identity. And that is the biggest challenge. And it really hurts you in your heart when you have to do that. But, um, you know, if I can just be completely real with all of you guys listening right now, even when it's hard and I know it hurts, but it's really the best thing that you can do um, for yourself. Because if you know already that it's not right for you, um, you know, it, the sooner that you can move on, it's like that sunk cost fallacy, you know, like it's, it's the, the more, the problem isn't the time that you already put in and that's valuable. And I learned valuable skills, you know, from doing all of this stuff. All my time as a musician has greatly influenced my perspective um, to my professional job and, and as well just as a as a you know informed citizen of the world and I had an amazing opportunity to live in another country that has like really been foundational for me as a person and through music I had you know as as a younger musician I got to tour in Europe we toured in um, France we went to Monaco and a couple of other places um, with an orchestra that I was part of. So I've had so many amazing experiences through that. I've met so many friends. And even though it hurts like to lose that as part of my identity, um, it's also good. But the real problem is once you realize and you know the truth in your heart that whatever you're doing is not for you, the real damage is all the time that you spend after that point not making this decision. Hmm. Yeah, I think that that is so powerful. I, you know, it's funny you you talk about that. I started my college career as a music major as well. Oh, really? And what what a instrument or area of of concentration? So my emphasis was in percussion. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So and I so I was a drummer for people that don't know what percussion is, but uh, you know, I've I've been there where like you're required to practice six to eight hours a day just to like. And that's like for like to barely keep up, not even yeah. to like be amazing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I, when I let go of that, like it's a huge, huge hit to your identity. And it's difficult because you can't see what's on the other side. So you feel like you're giving up something that means everything to you for nothing. That's what it feels like at the, at the moment. But you have to trust that like what's on the other side is going to be better for you and bring you into a greater sense of power because if you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing, you've got to move on. A hundred thousand million percent. And what you said brings to mind um, that, that phrase, like jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. And like, so that is what it can feel like, you know, and you know, that if I know your audience is international and stuff. So that basically means like you're leaving something that you don't, uh, that's not good for you for something that's worse, you know, but, and that's what it can feel like. But the truth is that you might be jumping out of the frying pan and into the pool or like onto the kicking it in a beach in Mexico on your laptop or whatever. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So Jamie, I want to, I want to switch gears just a little bit. I love you telling your backstory. So tell us a little bit more about like what you do right now. Like what, what are you doing right now in your business and what are some goals that you're reaching for this year? Yeah, absolutely. So what I do for my clients is broadly, I look at their customer journey and their sales process, and I do conversion rate optimization over every touch point. Um, so like we talked about earlier, I started as a copywriter, and this is like my main foundational skill. But at this point, I draw a lot from also like user experience and design and technology. So now what I'm offering is more of a holistic um, solution and approach where it's not just that. And, and, you know, I call myself a solution agnostic consultant. So I am not going to tell someone that... Uh, you know, you definitely need to be doing Snapchat ads or whatever. I am really most interested in what are you doing right now? What is working for you? Can we make that better? And also, even if something is working, there's still usually gaps or holes where people are falling out. And my job is to identify those and then create and implement a, uh, you know, a fix to do that, like uh, plug up the potholes and stuff like that. Or if something is 
but you know, you'd be surprised. There are a lot of clients who are say maybe they're using, um, spending like $20,000 a month on Pinterest or whatever, and they don't get a single lead. And sometimes they need someone to say, um, Hey, would you like to just put that $20,000 in the garbage? Because it's basically what you're doing. Um, and I also work at a much smaller scale too. And I've worked with, you know, small and medium businesses also gotten them great results. Um, but I like to talk about the, you know, the bigger numbers and stuff like that, because sometimes that's more like where I've done the whole process, if that makes sense, where other times if I'm working with a smaller business or a medium business, we're maybe just looking for like the low hanging fruit um, that will move the most of the needle, but it's not like the whole kit and caboodle. So that's what I do now. That's awesome. So, and how did you get hooked up with Jay Shetty? I just, I have to ask, I'm super curious. You know, what's hilarious. I did not even know who Jay Shetty was. Like even when I got the interview and the job and stuff like that, like he, cause, um, the, his business partner, had posted up on uh, one of the Facebook job boards or whatever, just vague, like, you know, influencer, two sentences, and here's what we're looking for. And it was basically like the entire sales funnel type of stuff. And I'm like, well, I know, like, I write all the entire sales funnel type of stuff. So you could get all of that from one person. And then I started like DMing with him. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, blah, 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 Jay Shetty, like, you know who that is? And I'm like, no. And then he's like, okay, well, whatever, test project. And so to be honest with you, how did I land Jay Shetty? A couple of, I would say, key um, highlights, and we can dig like deeper into each one of them. So the first is just overall, my process for reaching out and pitching. A lot of people like don't have great pitches. So we can talk about that. The second thing, was that he said that he really liked my writing portfolio. And look, you guys, like everybody thinks that, especially I'm going to talk right now to copywriters and aspiring copywriters, also content writers and, you know, similar. People really have this belief that you need to have like a fancy, wow, bam, zamo um, type of portfolio on your website and stuff like that. I don't have that, you guys. And still to this day, I use a Google document. It's just a Google document. I break it down by the parts of the sales funnel or the whole sales funnel. Um, and it's like two sentences maybe about the project. And then otherwise I just link people to copy, to results, to dollar signs that I've made. Um, and that's it. So don't listen to people who, or also if this is I, like, he, here's, here's what's more common. Don't let this prevent you from starting. I know so many people who are like afraid to, well, not afraid, but like they're kind of, kind of procrastinating, kind of putting off that whole actually reaching out to clients part because like I'm still building my portfolio, um, like building it out on a website type of thing. And let me tell you, people don't care. They just want to know that you can get them the results that they want. And even if you don't have results yet, all they care about is that you, one, know how to do the job, two, um, are, can meet deadlines and three can follow directions. So even if you don't have results, if you can at least communicate that much, then you're, let me tell you, not only are you Gucci, like you're doing better than like 70% of the stuff that people get. And then the third thing is that, uh, we, before like they brought me on as the full-time copywriter they I did like one or two test projects. So I was evaluated uh, and pay, I paid for them. So also guys, don't let people like bully you or try to like trick you or whatever into doing test projects for no money. Um, I was paid for my test projects and we did two test projects where uh, they, I guess were so happy with the results that they took me on and made me the full-time copywriter. Wow, that's amazing, that's amazing. Okay, so let's go into that pitch. Like, how, how do you pitch people? Oh, gosh. Like, we'll give some, some broad, uh, like, general advice about what not to do. And you guys, I have been, and you, you've been on the other side of this too, Lizanne. Like, if you guys have not had this experience, I highly recommend go to some type of job board or whatever and post a job. Like, even if you have to make it up or something, just to see what type of whack stuff 
people send you. Um, so a lot of people give like copy and paste type of thing. A lot of people just give you some type of weird answer that is not at all relevant to what you actually said. And um, honestly, here's a really big one. And I, I think maybe you've seen this becoming more common on job boards and stuff like that. Usually they will include some type of direction like, um, like give me your favorite color or like tell me your favorite animal as the first line of the um, message that you send me or whatever. So many people don't do that. And let me tell you, you guys, you're not being like cute. You're not being coy. You're not being clever. If you don't do that, like you're automatically out of the running. It doesn't matter how good the rest of what you say are um, or is, excuse me. You just absolutely have to do that if they're asking for it. I ask for it because I literally just want to know like, you know, hello, like, is anybody in there? Like, are you, are you paying attention? Like, you with me right now? You know, and if you can't put red and then write the rest of your stuff that you want me to read, then it just shows like a total lack of respect for the people who are potentially going to hire you. And I've literally had people reach out to me. Like when I've, I've posted stuff, I've literally had people reach, like when they send their message, they're like, haha, ha, like, are you really not going to respond to me if I don't do that? Like, ha, ha, ha. And then they go on with the rest of their pitch. And I'm like, yep, delete. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, so that is a big first um, no-no. A, a piece of advice would be to, as you're reading the job posting, try to say something specific. So in the case of like this posting for Jay Shetty, they were saying that they pretty much like wanted the whole sales funnel type of thing. So in addition to like, here's what I don't recommend. I don't recommend having a pitch that you just copy and paste and send. What I do recommend is having maybe a couple of formats that you like experiment with. Um, and you don't have to start from scratch every time. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but maybe that you take your couple formats that work well for you and then edit them to be a little more specific to what it is that you're actually replying to and if they ask for any type of information like i talked about before be sure that you do that and even if it's not like you know your favorite color or an animal or whatever like if they ask for information like they want your name and your email and your website or whatever dumb stuff that they list just be sure to double check your message message that you sent everything that they asked for because it's like just the easiest way that you can prove to people that you are like game, ready to help them, ready to listen to them. Because that's the thing. It's, you know, I know that with a lot of us and me included, you know, it's like, I don't want to be told how to do my job. Like, I don't want to be micromanaged. You know, you guys have a valuable skill. You're here to help someone. So it's not all about following directions, but it is, like I said before, about showing respect to what they're asking for and also just showing that you're listening to them mm, so in the that. yeah and in the case of the jay shetty thing like they said all of this other stuff so i just made sure to include like hey saw your posting i see that you're looking for someone with experience in the entire sales funnel i think that i would be a great fit for you because you know blah -de blah -de blah like whatever your specific reason was for me, my specific reason was that I've worked with other, you know, speaker, author, influencer, authority type homies, and I've done all of that stuff. Like I could do it in my sleep and I have experience with it and stuff like that. I um, love that. Hey, well, we are, we are running out of time for this portion of the interview, but I would love to give you a second to talk about, um, Jamie has been really generous and she's going to give us access to a course that a, a portion of her course so I want to give you a second to talk about that and then also give you a chance to, to talk about the course that you have that people can uh, purchase if they want to learn copywriting from, from you. Yes, absolutely. So I have a, if you want to learn about sales funnels and you want to, you're like, oh, I've written Facebook ads, but never a landing page or I've written emails, but never this or that. I'm going to fix that for you right now and for free because I love you. So I have a free sales funnel course, conveniently titled free sales funnel course, um, where it's a 30 day course. And what we do is I walk you through, 
I decided to make it from the beginning of the customer journey through the end in a chronological order, just because I thought that, um, you know, seems simple, but you're going to learn everything from identifying your customer, doing the research process, which let me tell you, this is the number one mistake with most of my clients is that when they create assets or whatever, or even when they hire somebody else to create assets, they are approaching with the mindset that they are their avatar. And that's usually not the case. So this is going to help you like give you a, not only fix that, but give you a process for actually understanding how to make that jump. Um, you're going to learn how to do content opt-ins and how to write pages for the lead gen and all that good stuff. Sales pages, email sequences, launches, da 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 da, da. It's 30 days, a daily email with, and it's actionable, you guys. Every assignment or every lesson tells you exactly what to do at the bottom. And you're, if you're looking for something hands-on, fun, bite-sized, but you feel like you're making real progress and you're looking most importantly for something that you can apply to your business right now, um, then you can go to the sales funnel course and the link will be in the description stuff. But if you're listening and you want to know it real quick, it's T-H-E hyphen, that's the one in the middle, not the underscore that goes down. So T-H-E hyphen D like dog, O-E-R-C-O dot com slash funnel course so or you could probably just google jamie dorshuk funnel course and i think that it will come up for you that's awesome and she's she's also going to give us a version of that that you can get in the toolbox yeah so we're going to be putting that in the toolbox as well um so those are the two places you can get it super excited thank you so much for that um and then you have another course if people want more in-depth help and guidance from you as well right Yes, this one is my entire consulting process. So if you've listened to this interview and you're like, wow, the stuff Jamie is doing sounds really cool and you want to learn exactly how I do it, um, I have created, like I take everything that I do, whatever black magic goes on in this Pandora's box that's between my two ears, and I have actually figured out what the F is going on in there so that you can learn how to do it. And it's like no, no holding back no bs and it's not basic marketing stuff um fully how to do my consulting process as well as my approach to writing each asset and that is called copywriting crash course c3 you can find out about that by going to jamiedoor.com so it's j-a-m-i-e-d-o-e-r.com there's a fun little quick survey for you to do there and then you put your email in and i will email you the link to pre-order what small marketing strategy or tactic has made the biggest difference in your business and why the biggest difference in my business has come from personally getting better at sales and i want to gear down and tell you guys exactly how i got better at sales the thing Here's a story that my uh, colleague told me, and it really made a huge difference. Once there was a dude, and this is a very truncated version of the story. There was a dude, he was uh, selling vacuum cleaners. There were two big companies, vacuum cleaner A company, vacuum cleaner B company. One sold a really expensive vacuum cleaner, and the other one sold like a regular average price vacuum cleaner. So he was working at the average price place. Then he got a new job at company A and he's all, he's lit, he's ready. You know, like I can't wait to see what secret these guys have that makes this vacuum cleaner like so expensive. I'm really hyped. Then he got there and he found out that it was actually basically just the same vacuum cleaner. And his supervisor, he's like, so how can I sell it? I don't know, I don't feel good about doing this. So his supervisor said, all you have to do is say now, that'll be $10,000 with a smile. So the thing is, you have to be confident about the value that you're giving. And when you're, when you're doing sales, you're on a sales call with a prospect, you don't want to appear desperate and you don't want to give off the impression that like, I need this job. I have to get this job. Even if that's true, you have to take this, I call head trash and you have to just take it and crumple it up and throw it away. And literally, like, I'm not even kidding. It sounds, you know, silly. It sounds kind of dumb. But if you can just stop telling yourself that, 
you will be amazed at the difference in how your calls go as you're engaging with clients. So here's a, a piece of actionable advice that you can take um, home with you and you could do it on your next call. Just like, you know, the 15 minutes or whatever before you're gonna get on the call, tell yourself, I don't need this. I could walk away from this. I could just not even show up to the call. I don't need it. And just tell yourself that, like I said, seems whack, seems weird, seems silly, um, but it will do a lot to moving the attitude and the mentality and how you approach other people when you're doing sales calls. And just um, getting that mindset shift has done wonders for me as far as like how I come off when I'm doing these prospecting calls. I love it. Yeah, it's so it's so fascinating, like the energy of sales uh, that people have to be cognizant of. You know, people want to hire someone who's confident that they can get results. Um, and I know that it's not just like that they're trying to get the job for money because yeah. that the person who's doing the hiring, like results is what they're after. Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, I love that. I love that. That's amazing. Okay. Well, do you want to take a couple seconds to talk about the course that you're giving to, to listeners? We're super excited about this. Yes, absolutely. The, uh, so if you guys want to learn all about how to make a sales funnel, maybe you're like, I've written Facebook ads before, but not a sales page, or I've only written emails and nothing else. So if you want to learn step by step, how exactly to do every single part of that process, then you're going to love the free sales funnel course that I have put together for you. Conveniently called free sales funnel course. It is a 30 day sales funnel course. Let me be honest with you guys as a copywriter. I feel like my weakest point is naming things. <laughs> so I just like to make it simple and straightforward. Um, it's a 30 day step-by-step -step email course where you get one email per day and you're going to follow the customer journey. I started it from, basically you're gonna go chronologically through the sales funnel because I thought that that would be simple and easy. Um, we're going to learn uh, a big mistake that a lot of my clients make when they're writing assets or even hiring somebody else to make their assets is that they approach it with the fact that like, I am the avatar and that is not correct. And if you're taking that approach, that's probably why your assets are not converting, no matter if you do them or somebody else does them. So we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. And not only am I going to show you how to change that mentality, but I'm going to give you a process that you can follow um, so that you can get the correct avatar, nail that down. That will be so beneficial through the rest of everything. And then you're going to get step-by-step -step direction on how to write, like how to create an opt-in and not just like how to create an opt-in guys, but like how to create an opt-in that people actually want. Um, so we're, you're going to learn how to do that. You're going to learn how to create opt-in pages that actually convert and every step of the way through the sales funnel from writing sales pages, writing email sequences for sales, doing product launches and all of that good stuff. So I cannot wait to help you in the free sales funnel course. Oh, and by the way, it's my, my real email. That's like, you know, it's not like a no reply or whatever. So if you have a lesson and you have questions or you want to like share with me what you're working on, you can absolutely reply to that email and send me what you're looking on. Um, and I do try, uh, I reply to everything and I try my best to take the time to review everything that people send me. Um, it's a bit challenging because I'm pretty busy and you know, I'm just helping you guys as a friend, um, but I'm a good friend. So a good friend who tries to help you. Um, but yeah, so I highly recommend you join that. And Lizanne is going to make sure that you get all hooked up with that. Um, it will be in your toolbox. Sorry, I stole your line, but. <laughs> no, you're totally great. That's perfect. I love that you know exactly where I was going with it. <laughs> hey guys, so we are so grateful. This is Jamie Doroshek. Jamie, thank you again for being on the show. We're going to have access to that whole uh, course, which we're super excited about um, in the Marketing Matrix Toolbox. You can get that at toolbox.themarketingmatrixpodcast.com. So guys, Go check it out in the toolbox. And again, super excited. Jamie, thank you so much for, for being with us on The Marketing Matrix. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you everyone for listening. I really appreciate your time and I hope that I've given you value today. Oh, you definitely have. <laughs>